In this video we are going to be installing Node.js and we are also going to talk about what Node.js is and why we need it for this project. And you are watching Dev Tips with guest hosts MPJ and David. You mentioned Node. What is Node? All right, so Chrome has a JavaScript engine inside of it, right? Yeah. Sure. Uh, what somebody did a couple of years ago was to break that engine out because that is a separate open source module, made it possible to use that on your computer. All right. Uh, so you can basically just run, run JavaScript in your computer or anything because it's just the V8 engine separated from a browser. Cool. And they also added a couple of IO libraries and what that means is that you can uh, read files and uh, uh, connect to the network and stuff like that. Okay, so let's install, install it. What do I need? We're gonna need a browser because we want to go to uh, uh, nodejs.org. Ah, you have a Windows keyboard for <laughs> Mac. Yeah, but it's the same as the Mac. All right, so I'll just search for Node.js. Yeah. Cool, first, Here. yep. Boom. Uh, and then there's download for Mac OS and there's two versions, uh, pick the latest. I, we're not gonna go into why there are two versions, uh, just don't worry about it. Click here, install, install. Touch ID, waiting, this is- Balloon of death. All right. Okay, yes, approve. Um, okay, yes. and yeah, yeah throw cool. it away. All right, cool. Uh, so you can close the window now. And now just open up the terminal, just use uh, Spotlight. If this is the first time you're seeing the terminal, it's the command line prompt in, uh, in Mac OS where you can do all kinds of system things. Okay, so to start using Node, I just type Node, right? Yep. And this is now uh, the REPL. So this is a, now you can type JavaScript here and it will be interpreted. It's basically like the developer console inside of, um, uh, inside of Chrome. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so uh, if you just type 5 plus 5, it will uh, add that. Okay, so now we have Node installed. Yeah. Great. You can just go out of this by Control C. We also have NPM installed. Uh, and NPM is the package manager that is included for Node. It's, uh, it's a JavaScript package manager, and what that means is that you you can pull in all kinds of uh, uh, helpful packages. It, you can think of it sort of like jQuery plugins, but way more clean and much more powerful with uh, a much larger wealth of, of libraries. Just open up npm.org uh, in the browser, just so that you can give, us, give people a sense of it. Oops. Yeah, exactly. This is npmjs.org. This is, yeah. this is very standard. The uh, National Public Musicians uh, site gets lots of traffic from this. npm, you can search for something like. Uh, I've used this called Moment. Yeah. yeah it's a da date library to easily add and remove uh, a days from dates and stuff. Yeah, and uh, this is just one example. There are an insane amount of packages here and they're really easy to pull into your application. We're not gonna uh, spend much time with this. It's just so that you know what the hell NPM is. The benefits of the package manager uh, is obvious, but uh, the, uh, it's not clear why we are installing uh, V8 on, the, on, on your computer. Why do we need that? Why can't we just use the browser? The main reason is that we want to do uh, transpilation and bundling. Transpilation, what is transpilation? As a developer, as a JavaScript developer, you have this issue that JavaScript is this open standard that all browsers can uh, interpret. But they're doing it in their own way. Yes, they're doing it in their own way and in their own generation. So whenever uh, there's new uh, fancy features added to JavaScript, it will take years and years and years before uh, all the browser vendors have updated those versions and also rolled it out to, uh, to the users and all the users have, uh, have updated their browsers. That is why we have transpilation. It allows us to write modern JavaScript, but it will still run on older browsers. The second reason why we use Node.js uh, when doing uh, front-end development is to do bundling. We talked a little bit about what Node.js is. It's a package manager and it allows you to use packages and you tend to use a lot of packages. Uh, and 
if each of those packages resulted in a browser request, a network request, we would end up with a lot of requests. Some of you know this and some of you don't, but you want to keep the amount of requests that the browser does to a reasonable minimum. Because uh, even though network connections are, are reasonably fast and we have very fast connections, there is a latency, an, an overhead uh, for every request. Uh, and if we have a lot of requests, that means that we uh, waste a lot of time for the user. So what do you mean? So Node is bundling for us? Yes. So instead of uh, going to the lake and fetching water in these small buckets all the time, what uh, bundling allows us to do is to go over there with a huge tanker truck and get all the water at the same time. A bundler basically bundles all the components into one big bowl and delivers that to the browser. And because, uh, because of latency issues, that almost always ends up being faster. How do I use npm? All right, so uh, you just type npm install and then dash g because we are going to install a global package where don't worry too much about what that means for now. You're going to type create react app. Cliffhanger, because that is what we're going to do in the next episode. Ah! Follow us now to the next episode where we install create react app, which is this thing that allows us to create react apps.